Choose to take actions that may or may not change it. Yeah. And that comes back to accepting. Like, let's say you are, you are in an abusive relationship and you choose to like, to like, uh, to like leave the, leave the situation, but you like can't come out, like you can't leave what do you do? Like you try to take an action against the thing and your actions are, are, are ineffective. Like, what do you do? Do you have to re resort back to accepting it? To that scenario, which is a good, which is a good scenario is unless you're, and this is going to be one of those like really brutally honest statements, you know, unless you're literally physically detained, locked up in some way, shape or form, you always can remove yourself from the situation. Now, I don't say that to convey a non-understanding. Like there's a lot of mental processes that go on and why people don't leave that situation. However, the, the reality of, of things are, you, you always can remove yourself unless you are being physically detained uh, which is really preventing you from having any type of, of will and then there's you know those are extreme scenarios where you would have to dissect one by one um, what you could do for strategies to you know escape a capture so to speak however most of those most of those scenarios aren't what we face at least in this country from day to day I would agree on the most part, I would agree. Like there's ways to like, there's ways to get help and to remove yourself from a situation. So you have the three modalities, which are enthusiasm, enjoyment, and acceptance. And then out of those modalities, is it the modality comes first and then the actions come first or the actions come first and then the modalities come second? Yeah, that's a good question. I was never, that was never addressed and Thinking of that offhand, I, I feel the two would be interchangeable. Because if you're if you're in, if you're ingraining it where you're always in one of those modes, that clears you to to be in action, right? With one of those three choices, or if you find yourself stuck where you are in a negative uh, frame of mind or in a negative situation. You may, you may then remember or may need to make one of those choices to get back into your modality. So I feel you could really, you could interchange it. There's not a, there's not a, a linear fashion where that has to be implemented. Okay. Yeah, then in that case, I would say that it's, that the choices are accept it, remove yourself from it, or take action rather than choose to change it. I would say it would be choose action. Um, and I, I think it's interesting that you have these three choices here because these are like the three like good choices, right? There's also like an infinite number of like, uh, like denial, you know, like self-loathing. There's like an infinite number of choices, but these are the three that are like most beneficial. I think you address that later in the article actually. Another thing that came to mind is a fourth option, which is like, it could be categorized in uh, choice or choosing action, but it's the shifting of your perception, right? Like, let's say you have a situation that is, un not, is unfavorable, like your, um, Mm, kind of like the car example you were using, like you accepted it, but at the same time you shifted your focus to, you shifted your awareness to like, it's not so bad. 
So is it really an acceptance? Well, there is acceptance as well, but there's also this other choice of shifting your perception. Like today, it's raining. It's raining pretty bad. It's like pretty cold. I'm wearing this thing. And uh, it's like, okay, I obviously accept it because there's absolutely nothing I can do to change the rain, right? Absolutely nothing I can do about that. But I can change my perception about it as like, oh, it's not cold and wet. It's just not my preferred type of weather. Or, oh, it's natural. This is needed because, you know, April showers bring May flowers. So is that like a fourth choice? It's not an action. I guess it's the action of changing your perception, right? But it's not an action. It's not really accepting it. Uh, it is, but it's not. And it's definitely not removing myself or changing it. I think so. I love that you're you're bringing us call it a fourth dimension into the into the picture. Given that you know the the book I'm currently reading is all about perception at the level of neuroscience so this is very interesting for you to ask and bring up a really great point and then Mita started thinking about it uh, for the first time putting those two together so what what I think happened is I've yet to experience where you can internally shift perspectives almost like uh, I, I think of one of those old school and this after people that ever see this they have no idea what I'm talking about those with those glasses you look, look through and you could you could flip the thing and you get the different slides yeah 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 I think of that as you know we're shifting our perspective however I think when like you look at the rain and you choose to I, I think you're, you're you're accepting it and within accepting it the brain is automatically like you press the, the trigger and it's shifting that perspective. Yeah, I, I feel the acceptance and the perspective shift are, are almost simultaneous or they, they act in such a rapid fashion. I, at this moment, can't discern which mechanism is, is happening at what time or prior to what. So that, that seems, at least at my current moment, beyond my capacity to think of what process is happening at what time. It seems to be, a, let's call it at the, at the very least, a symbiotic relationship or a symbiotic relationship between accepting and a, and a shift in perspective. I think they, they go hand in hand. What about in a situation like, um, like let's say you go to the zoo, right? And there's a lion behind a glass. Does he have COVID-19 or not COVID-19? He, he, has, he has a natural remedy. He has not been vaccinated, but he is also COVID-19 free. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what if you go to the zoo and there's a lion behind this, this glass? Let's say you and I go to the zoo at the same time. We're, we're together. We go to the zoo. And you're like, man, look at that lion. He's so dangerous. And I go, no, I go, look at that lion. He's so cute. So neither of us are accepting the lion. We're not really accepting, but there's obviously a difference in perception there. So which one is the truth? Is the lion cute or is it dangerous? Well, that would, that would be to assume that there's, there's one finite truth both perspectives, I would say, are equally valid. And I would also have to ask you is, what is not being accepted about the lion? Mm, that's a great question. I guess, oh, it's, that's a great question. It's like, in my view, I am, not that I'm not accepting it, but I'm not focusing on its dangerous capacity. Right, and, that, and, and also think, are you in danger or is it an animal that capable of putting us in a dangerous situation which by danger harms to our ourselves yeah it's it's definitely it's neither it's neither inherently cute nor dangerous 
but it has the capacity to be both. Well, we, ha we have the capacity to extrapolate that meaning, that narrative, that perspective. For sure. an animal that just is, I mean, you can go really deep into the whole construct of even the word lion. Well, is it a lion? Or that's just a sound that we created to describe something else that we can hear in the English language as lion. And it makes sense to us. Well, if you went to another culture, you know, I, I think of Chinese, I think because the dialect is, is so apples and oranges, and you said the word lion, or let's flip it around. If somebody who spoke Chinese said lion to me, I would have, I mean, the name in itself, the, the sound that we make. I mean, again, I'm, I'm unpacking a little bit further. Uh, it's, all, it's, all, it's all meaning that we extrapolate from meaningless information. And, and if you want to go to the core of our biology, really the only thing we're wired to perceive is what you said. Is, is it dangerous or not? Am I going to be in harm's way or not? Am I survival? Right? Am I going to, I'm probably not going to fight it. So I'm going to say our option is going to be to run. <laughs> and that's not going to work either because uh, if anyone knows anything, uh, you're not going to outrun a lion unless maybe you're Hussein Bolt. <laughs> all right so acceptance and perception go hand in hand and life is it's perception it's everything it's everything you can and, and i and i like that analogy i gave because that's that's what, how i can picture it and maybe easier for other people to see it is you know there's there's a wheel of perception one may say infinite for so many that you might as well say infinite. And you have all these slides and they're all various slides of the same thing. Looking at, looking at any situation, any circumstance, any moment, there, there's, there's let's, let's say for the sake of trying to uh, hold a figure in our head, millions of, of perceptions that we don't realize we have availability to choose from. And all of them are equally valid. All of them are a different way of looking at something or, or creating a meaning of information that we're seeing. And there's always a perspective that can be the other side of the coin or the lighter way of looking at it. And when you wake up to understanding that we have a choice in that, then the question becomes, do you want to operate through a positive lens or a negative one? But living life positively is a, is a choice, regardless of circumstance, because it all comes down to perspective. And I love that, again, that you added that component to this. It's almost, it's also, it's like acceptance and perception go hand in hand. You could also, how can I say this? I think it's to be said that perception and acceptance go hand in hand, but that they don't have to be in agreement. Like you could perceive something that you don't like and still accept it for what it is. Or you could perceive something that has no inherent meaning and then change your perception of it until you accept it. I haven't, and, and so I think going back to when I first had that uh, involuntary, is what I was looking for, involuntary reaction with the car in front of me and accepting it and that smile, I, I think I don't, I think the very nature of not accepting something is like it's going to, you're going to be in a negative state of mind. Apparently. And so I do think they go hand in hand because I don't, unless you can bring up an example, I can't think of right now a, a perspective that you cannot accept. Uh, or should I say, I can't think of a perspective that you would accept and then be in a, in a negative mind. Because if, if that acceptance is more of accepting the present moment, 
And like I said, 100% of the time, you will be in a, it will put you in a positive state. Uh, I want to say happy, however, it may, uh, it may be at minimum a, a neutral feeling. You won't, you won't have a negative experience when you're, when you're really accepting the moment. I've never seen anything to the contrary. However, I'm open to uh, any counter argument. My perception, I can perceive something I don't accept. Well, I mean, like, in the case of crimes and morality and ethics, uh -huh. I can perceive things. And just because they're happening, I can accept them as reality. Like, that's, that's really what's happening. But it doesn't mean I actually accept what's happening. So, that there, so there's, like, we have to make sure we're on the same page of acceptance. Uh -huh. Like, there's no doubt that that's happening. Like, that's the acceptance of reality, right? But for these crimes that are happening, I can, like, not accept their moral and ethical implications. So that's what I, that's what I mean. Like, I'm perceiving them, and I'm not accepting them. Which leads me to your other choice, right? Choose to change it. So I'm not choosing accept. So I have the perception of it, but I'm not choosing acceptance. I'm choosing to ch try to change it. Yeah, so there's that, a lot of layers to that. that that's a really good point. Uh, so there's that, and there's also the same thing, the crime and the morality. I, I can perceive it and not accept it, so then I, I choose change. Or I can perceive the crime and be like, change my perception, which is like, okay, this person is stealing because they're hungry and they're on the street. And they're not stealing from anyone. They're not really hurting anyone. They're stealing from like, you know, Amazon. I'll just change my perception around that and then accept that crime as like, he's doing it to survive. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? How does that, how does that make you feel though? What's, what's, what's the thought process? What's the feeling in that right now? Of the crime, like stealing from Amazon? Well, even just in general, you know, crimes happening. I think I can be safe to say every minute and be right if somebody were to fact check that. And you said that you don't accept the moral, the, the morality of it or the, the morals that one may be, uh, you know, operating from. So we know that's happening right now. So how does that make you feel right now? that crimes are happening right now. I think that there are crimes. So even on, even with crimes, I think that there is like all crimes are wrong. And then there's some crimes are more wrong than others. It's kind of where I'm at. Like and there's- so how do you break down wrong? I think it comes to So wrong for me is like where you start to impede on other people's rights, right? Now, in this case with the Amazon package, that's somebody's right. They spent their hard earned money to get that. And then you can go into like, well, it's not really hurting anyone. So it's less wrong. And then you can go into like, well, that person worked like three months to buy that thing, whatever that was in that Amazon package. So they are being like really hurt. So then it gets like super gray. Yeah, there's, there's, I, I think, unless, uh, depending on time frame, we should really go deep because there's a, there's a lot of layers, there's a lot of things to pack in that statement. And so when, when I'm speaking uh, in my blog or any video, anything that I speak from, I just want to, you know, so everyone understands I'm speaking in terms of reality of just what is. And then when you get in terms of, of life, you're, you're, you're stepping down into, you know, a morality level, into the mechanisms of how things work. And like what you said has so many levels. Okay, our right. Again, everything's created. I mean, we, we started from dirt 
and, and, and vegetation and animals and we created cities and we created rice. Right? Now we have rice. Right. And all these things and mechanisms that we design are so arbitrary and so subjective. Uh, you know, you, if we take the, the Amazon package, for example, it's wrong for that person to steal a package. There's so many different ways we can flip that coin. It could be someone that worked really hard, their hard-earned money. It could be a, you know, let's say a 16-year-old worked a summer job and that was their first purchase. And, you know, then we can unpack, you know, no pun intended, what's in the, what's in the box? What was actually ordered? What are they actually stealing? You know, what if it was a, a sample of, of Colgate toothpaste, you know, and it was being sent from free from a company that's worth billions that get their money from, from someone else spending money and, and maybe the person that's spending the money isn't getting fresh teeth. So now they're, you know, Colgate stole from them. And, you know, you, you, can, you can unravel this scenario, again, in so many various perspectives. Uh, so it's not, not that you, you can't make a case from that. It's just hard because there's so many general aspects of just putting out such a blank canvas of a story like that, especially when you have you know two people like ourselves that can understand perspective and can unpack that story into infinite layers so i would need an extremely specific aspect of that and i feel like we could take which might be actually would probably be fun we could take probably an hour unpacking the aspects of someone stealing a box and coming back but the, but you see back to the point of like I can perceive something and then accept the reality of it, or I can change my perception and then accept the reality of it. So in that case, in that case of the Amazon package, right? Let's say we don't have all the details. Let's say we don't know what's in the box. Let's say we don't know who bought it. But I can choose to change my perception of like, okay, that person stole out of necessity. And that was like, you know, not knowing what's in the box. You know, it could have been like, uh, it could have been like, you know, some high end electronics worth thousands, of, like let's say it was an iPhone. So that's like a thousand bucks, right? Not knowing what's in the box, I can change my perception and say, that person stole out of necessity to survive. Or I could change my perception to like, that person who bought the package really lost out. And that person who committed the crime is really in the wrong. So we have, I can perceive something and not accept it. That's like crimes and morality, like murder. And there's also, I can change my perception and accept the reality. What do you have to say about that? Is that another layer? Is that is that what is that for you yeah because we're, we're getting on morality and uh many times i'm having conversations uh what i'll say is you know i speak in terms of reality okay not morality because morality is subjective and that's where we can just unravel that uh so i did a perfect example a case of murder right and this can be a very touchy subject uh, i think this is the video where i start getting uh hate comments already right? and i just just started making content. <laughs> uh, so someone gets murdered. All right, we'll just try to keep this uh, not too detail oriented. Someone gets murdered. When I say acceptance, when I speak in when that terms and when I speak in terms of reality, what that means is being present where, okay, someone got murdered five hours ago. All right, acceptance means I'm here now. I'm here now. Anything other than that is a thought where you're now getting, you're going to get caught into a mind trap where, okay, what influence does that murder have on you? What are you then going to do with that information? Or are you going to think about how unfortunate, like all these thoughts we may have about it. Uh, it was unfortunate. Uh, you know, it was, it, let's, let's just make this really, you know, more of it. It was, it was a young girl, completely innocent. Uh, some 50 year old man did it. And it could be, it, and it's not to say, it's not an instance of you know, being insensitive 
where it wasn't in, in, in a term of morality a terrible thing to happen. It's just the reality of it is all you're experiencing is the actual thought. And like you said, this this stuff is happening. I, I, I'm fair to say every minute of every day. So let's go a little further. If that murder, if, if it's really about thought that we're imposing of that murder, is so catastrophic to your being, how could you possibly function when you could go one step further and be in a continuous loop because it's 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 non it's nonstop in the world we live in. Okay, so it's it's you know, you know, life truly is a paradox because you can you can go to the extreme end and then say, okay, now what is that information doing for you? Right? You can't operate. If that if that stuff is, you know, we claim this compassion because a news story happens and we see some unfortunate incident and you know it's 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 so upsetting. Well, yeah, well, that's happening every minute. And that's actually, you know, that's a good segue to what these videos are about. It's about, it's about understanding a way of being and understanding the power we have by being conscious in the life we live. Because I personally believe that we can, we can stop all this if we stop feeding into it. I know we kind of we segued into a, a whole other category here, uh, but we really can. You know, it goes back to the media. The news is inherently negative. Well, we feed that negativity. So if they're getting ratings, if people are, if people are being attracted to it, if it's selling, well, that's what they're, that's what they're going to, that's what they're going to show. They're showing us what we want. You know, I, I, for one, don't watch the news. Not to say I'm not informed. I plug into other sources that allow me to receive information as is, as, as objectively as possible. And, th and then I can, I can process that. Versus information that for most media outlets, <clears throat> I'm not going to say all, there's, there's definitely some very credible and, and there's journalists that work really hard and, and people that are on lower tiers that aren't as popular and that really, really hone in on the value of what it is to report facts. However, the masses have this inherent biasness. And it's not even, you know, forget politically, because, you know, that's a whole other segment. Uh, it's, it's, it's so subjective. It's so, it's, it's negative regardless of you know what political party it's, it's just lean that way so let's go back to okay i don't i don't plug into that i'm not a viewer of that they're not selling to me okay so if 300 million more people chose that they're not going to plug into negativity because why would you why, why would you plug into that much negativity it doesn't make sense if you want to live a positive life well they're they're rating plumbing. Well, it's a business and, and, and they have a product that they want to sell to the market. Well, the market's not buying this. So we're either going to go out of business, which I can tell you that that's not what they want to happen, right? especially in this country. We're fueled by business and profit. Or we can, we can find out and shift to what's going to sell. And I can tell you, they're going to find out pretty quickly when if we were the shift to to subscribing the, the positive news with everything that's calculated, everything that's measured, they're gonna know very fast and, and you'll and you would start shifting what's what's brought to our attention because we have the choice as consumers of what we're consuming, consciously thinking. I think that's a really great point, and I think that's something we share deeply in common, right? So it's raising your awareness to reality, which is what you're about. And then it's like making sure you know and your audience knows like, what do I do with this awareness? And it's things like make conscious actions, like be aware of what you're consuming, be aware of the news you're consuming, 
Be aware of the products you're buying. Be aware of how your actions affect others. That's really like the, the, the focal point of everything. It's like, if you had this super high awareness and you realized the, rea the, the nature of reality and you realized the power of yourself, you wouldn't consume this kind of news. You would, and then you would do things like, like eat less red meat, like only eat red meat like once a week because it's so bad for the environment and things like that. So I think it's like for this kind of content, you really want to tie back to what the purpose is more often. Like the purpose is to see reality, raise our awareness, and then make better choices out of this awareness. Yeah, I agree. And, and, I, and I think that, you know, it's ultimately, it's, I want people to understand that a lot of choices, when, if, you, if you're living, which most people are living a, a negative life, and I don't mean that in terms of my judgment, they're going through life not in a positive state, not happy throughout. Uh, I want people to realize that you're, just, you're caught. You're, you're caught in this subconscious illusionary loop, and we all have the power to break out of it. And I want, and that's what I want people to see. And, and like you said, yeah, there's, there's, there's many different focal points, whether it's the environment, whether it's a living situation, whether, you know, it's, it's being in the impression, you know, and, and that's another whole topic, you know, medically, and, and I'll go brief because this is a segment in itself. Medically, yeah, there, there's a biology to humans and there's, there's situations where there is truly uncontrollable imbalances. However, my, my belief is, and, and I feel there's, I'm pretty sure there's research that backs this, if anyone wants to dig into it. Uh, a lot of medical diagnosis, a lot of mental disorders, they don't require a prescription. They really, they don't require drugs. What they, what they require is us to understand and to work out our mind and to get out of this narrative that's causing that, you know, again, we'll, we'll use the depression as an example. And then, you know, again, so I don't get hate comments, you know, and then there's ones that, yeah, the brain is, is not functioning due to hardwired systems that are pumping out these chemicals not allowing individuals to function properly. Those are the, you know, the severe, okay, I need medication to, to cause a balance back in my system. However, then there's those where it's a derivative of being stuck in this thought process that then is manifesting these symptoms of depression. And I think that the medical field just gotten so out of control with just, you know, passing out scripts like they're, they're Oprah on a talk show. And, you know, I also want the world to wake up and realize that a lot of that, and I dare say most of that, is, is not a hardwired problem. It's a software problem. And if anyone doesn't understand technology, I apologize, but that's the best analogy I can, I can think of at this moment. Yeah, I could see that. I think that with raising awareness, um, to tie back to that, <clears throat> I think that um, as we raise our awareness and we make these better decisions, one of them is also raising the awareness of people around us for issues like, like you said, the medical and like, you know, software versus hardware. I agree with that as well. I think that there is uh, there's a lot of things we can do with our minds alone, if not everything, possibly everything, you know, possibly. Um, get, subtract, or, um, removing like obvious, like, you know, hardware issues, you know, like formation issues and things, biology, things like that. 
Um, so I think that tying back, it's important that as we raise our own awareness to raise the awareness of others around us and that this platform that we're like reaching towards to make these like better decisions. And you, you spoke about like how we can affect ratings of companies. Really, that's one of the most powerful things we can do is make better decisions. Like choose your news, choose recycled products, you know, choose organic. That's one of the best things we can do. Yeah, and, and, and I want to elaborate on that too, because like choose organic. Well, most, most people know that, or anyone who's ever tried to purchase it, that organic costs more than, than process. And so what I say to that is we don't realize that you don't need every single living soul to make an extreme difference. And there's, a, there's enough people in the category that, that can afford it, that still haven't made that choice, that would make a, a significant difference. And I think we got to understand that too. Like when we say that, you can get the person that's, you know, working week by week, let's say they have, you know, they have good priorities in terms of things they need before things they want. And, and they could hear something like that. And again, these are these reactions. And so I'm just saying this to cover, you know, a, a, sm a, a small section to give an example of, you know, just statements like this. You know, people hear statements like that and they immediately react based on their perspective, their frame of thought. And they don't take the time to, as we're, you know, the theme, I guess you can say, is take the time to look at it differently, to change perspective, to think, well, maybe that's not talking to me. I get what they're saying. I support it. And it's like we're in a world where we need a, a disclaimer for everything. Like that's one example, one person that can view it and, and maybe take offense to it. And then you probably list a hundred more different varieties of people and perspectives that, you know, hear something. And what they're really doing is projecting their subconscious feeling or how about how they feel. So like that person that really can't afford it and heard that statement, oh, we should buy organic. A reaction that's coming through is really their projecting, their projecting, their, their frustration of their financial mm -hmm. yeah. they're not They're not actually addressing what was said. Yeah. Like the meaning of, or how it was intended to be and I think that in itself is something that needs to be addressed for people to understand because again it happens a lot with the news you know you, like uh, an example I saw this is how I stay plugged into pop culture every now and then I just go to the Yahoo homepage and I just scroll down and look at the heading and I find out what's going on in the world because that's what Yahoo is really good at you know it's all these pop culture headlines I spend five minutes and I'm like whoop, whoop, and I see what's going on so Again, you don't need hours. So within, you know, one of these uh, browsing features, I saw this uproar of Justin Timberlake because he said parenting 24-7 isn't human. And that, in, in, in the level of reaction, sparked my curiosity. So then I was like, all right, let me see a more context of what was said. And thankfully there was a video and I watched the video. And you could tell, or there's a perspective that could tell that his tonality and the nature of the conversation and who he was having with, he wasn't coming off, at least again, my perception, he wasn't coming off condescending, putting people down. He was speaking from being a parent. That's it, being a parent. Yet because he has status, because he worked really hard to be at the level he is financially, there is this huge backlash because they have millions of dollars. And what does he know about parenting? And there's, and there's single parents out there and they got it way harder and blah, blah, blah. And, and you know, I was raised by a single parent. So, you know, before uh, anything comes back on that. And it's, 
it's like, I mean, come on. That's a cho you're projecting your own negativity. He was just speaking in terms of a parent. He was speaking in terms of that single parent, of those people that are less fortunate, right? He got a sense of a different perspective. And he was, he was sympathizing with it. And right? he was showing empathy. And maybe that wasn't his intent. Maybe that's just my assessment. However, that's the reality that I lived through in that moment coming from the nature of living a positive life. And I don't know which was really true because I don't, I don't have his number and I can't be like, yo, Justin, so what did you really mean? And that's the point, you know, the, the, the meaning. We took information, what he said, and now we have a choice on what meaning we want to extrapolate from it. And ultimately, it's useless information. What Justin Timberlake said in his Zoom video conference to a couple other people makes no significance on those lives that responded. It, it was useless information. And so why choose to take that information and look at it so negatively? Because we, what we don't understand what happened is that is what fuels the background negativity in our world. Like, that's the difference it makes between living a positive life and a negative one. You take something from pop culture and you have this negative reaction and you're just adding more to the negativity that's there, which only comes from an illusionary, made up perception. Because at the end of the day, I don't know what his real meaning or intent was. And neither do the other million people that fired back because he shouldn't have said that because he's a celebrity. He's got millions of dollars and, you know, being human doesn't exist to him. I mean, at the end of the day, he's still a parent. I think that um, you said something at the beginning of that where it was like, when you say, when you say to someone like buy organic, and they have like a reaction. And even this example with Justin and the, like the reaction, it's like, it's really that reaction that causes people, well, in my opinion, it's that reaction, which 99% of the time is automatic, involuntary, subconscious. Right. It's the reaction that's really fucking us up. Yeah, yeah. Um, for lack of a better term. Like for that example of, of bioorganic, I was like, yeah. I, think I have to censor that though. I got to beat that. You got to beat that? <laughs> You're going to get me in trouble. I, mean, I don't even have a video up yet. I'm already going to get kicked off. <laughs> but go, I'm sorry. So the, uh, that when you said that about the bioorganic and, and it triggering people, I, I, I hadn't thought about it that people are, some people can't afford it. You know, and that really like got to me. I was like, oh, wow, yeah, you're right. And those people that can't afford it, they're going to project that out as like my, va my value is threatened um, because I can't afford to do the right thing, right? Or like to do the, the thing that's good for me, right? So I think that's really interesting that you brought that up because what, that, what came up in me is that like, okay, I'm approaching it from like not even necessarily a healthy for me standpoint. I'm approaching it from a healthy for the world standpoint. Like it's better to do that. I had no, I didn't, wasn't even considering the person's, the other person's like uh, self-worth based on what they consume, right? I wasn't even considering that. So in this journey to raise awareness, there's not enough voices. Everyone should be speaking. Like there's someone who's going to address like the self-worth and the financial and the like, like the, the dirty money stories. And there's people like myself who are just more con more concerned about like the collective good. Not that you're not, but like in my in my direct approach, it was like the collective good is we should all try to buy from farmers markets or whatever. Like they're not necessarily USDA organic, but they're clearly a better choice. And that just is really interesting that we have so many different avenues to address the same 
pains of the world and that like whatever avenue is yours like for whoever's listening whatever avenue is yours you should just do like take it as much as you can it doesn't have to be your job you don't have to be like an into a youtube influencer or whatever but if it's like if you just affect the one person in your life that person can affect two people you know if your way is blogging and my way is like instagramming or working with people one-on-one we should still take those actions and then that'll go bigger and bigger and bigger and affect people like there are people out there who are not so interested in saving the world as we are right there are people out there who are you know more money driven or more like experience driven maybe they're adrenaline junkies but those people having a higher sense of awareness having a higher sense of consciousness and this like elevated view they will make informed decisions you know part of it is the information knowing what's like good i say that cautiously knowing what's good and also being empowered to take those actions right like for the adrenaline junkies or for the travelers out there there's huge issues with like tourism versus ecotourism you know i think that part of it is the lack of information and then the other half is like oh well lack of information on like the actual scientific information like the effects on you know local environments and things like that and then there's also the the lack of information of consciousness and then the third the third element which we could go on these three things together is like the ability to take the action on what you think is right, you know? Yeah, and ultimately it comes, and, and you said it just a, a, a bit ago, it comes down to limiting or getting rid of the reaction, you know, because there is so many different avenues. Like when you talked about uh, eco tourism, right, versus, I forgot, what was the other one? Just regular tourism. Oh, just, <laughs> just regular tourism. I, I haven't heard that before. And, you know, it made me think of real quick. Where most here's an example. Real quick. Here's an example of ecotourism versus regular tourism. If you go to a foreign country and you decide to stay in like the Sheridan or like the Holiday Inn or like whatever, you're taking business away from like the local economy. Oh, that makes sense because and it, like it's economic as well as when you go there, are you buying like the food that's local there? Are you going to like the the actual local cosm, ecocosm of what's what's there, or are you like going in and then like you know ordering from Amazon for it to come to your hotel room and things like that? Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. So it's one of the things that. And who knows how long it's been. it's it's our listening. Most people listen to respond versus listening to to understand. And you know, like there's so much information out there. There's 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 it's too much at this point. It's, it's and I say too much because there's no living person on this planet can absorb the level of information that is just constantly available at a moment's notice and so it goes back to you know what you're saying about the news it's be conscious of what you're plugging into because eventually those other sources that are not as useful to us not as positive not as progressive uh they're gonna they'll fade out like as of now, it's like impossible to, to, to sift through it. You're, you're going to run into it unless you can start consciously navigating through life. If I turn on the TV right now and I'm just operating subconsciously or I just need something to watch or I'm just looking for you know, something in my face, it's not gonna take very long to get into a negative channel probably within 30 seconds I can get stuck on something that's negative versus making a conscious choice of what is it I'm looking for 
And it doesn't have to be a particular program. It's just, what am I looking for? Am I looking for something informational? Am I looking for something positive? Let's just say I'm not, you know, I just want to take a break. I'm just looking for something entertaining. Okay, so what can entertain me that doesn't add to, let's use, you know, the, the poison of negativity in the world? You know, watch, watch a, a movie or, or a sitcom and enter, like where it's just, as this was information, it's also harmless entertainment versus, again, focusing on the, on the news where it's, it's a negative entertainment. And it's, it's a negativity that's, that's poisoning our, our reality, our system of, of living. And so it's, you know, when we start making a conscious choice on what we plug into, more more people or more travelers. I mean, I, I, I have traveled here and there, so uh, maybe people that are, that are really avid about it have heard of that. Maybe I'm the minority. However, you know, again, if I didn't choose to plug into, you know, or, or like if we didn't have the, the communication that we have, which is really because, you know, we're, we're operating on a, on a similar frequency, now I've obtained more useful information that I know that affects my life now right now you told me that now traveling that's that's something that was just out of i just didn't know and i would have never known had this conversation not happened or had i have i not plugged into other what i consider high level content conscious thinking yeah you brought up something really interesting uh, a bit ago about it all starts with the listening there's two things you brought up, the, the negativity and the positivity, and also the, um, the listening. I'll go with negativity, positivity first. If it's just something that like kind of like downloaded in my head, it's like you're talking about this negativity and this positivity. And it's interesting that negativity is, um, it's, so, it's so like gross as in like, um, like everywhere, it's so um, commonplace. That, and then now that I'm thinking about the way they structure the media, movies, music, news, it's like negativity is everywhere, it's common. Positivity is not shown. And then on top of that, when positivity is shown, it's shown as like a fairy tale dream that you can't have. Like it's always like the richest, sexiest, coolest person doing the thing you want to do, if it's there at all. So not only is it hidden, but then when it's shown, it's elevated to unobtainable. So that is something to be aware of as if you're watching this, as you raise your consciousness, as you raise your awareness, it's like be aware of the negativity and then be aware that positivity is not rare. It's not unreachable, you know? It's just displayed that way. That's really, really we're, interesting. We're programmed. Pro and now it's a great example because that's all we see of positivity. So that's what we begin to associate with, you know, let's say winning in life. And it's this, it's, 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 the, horse, it's, it's the horse running after the rabbit in, 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 the, in the races. You know, it's, it's, it's being on a treadmill with the carrot in front of you, you know, and what people don't understand is we're being programmed never to catch the carrot. We just, we just want you to run. We just want you to keep running. You're never going to get the carrot. Just keep running because we need you to turn the treadmill. And then the other thing I wanted to bring up is you said it all, it's like in the reaction, it starts with the listening of people's listening. And I think a major key now that it's, now that we're discussing and these new thoughts are kind of like generating, a major key is the listening. When you're listening to things, you're listening for me, where we could be listening for us or we could be listening for self with a capital S, you know, the collective self, the, the organism of 
the human race, you know, the self. That was really interesting too. Like, yeah, it does start with the listening and, and the listening naturally is the listening of me. Well, you can argue it's natural or it comes like shortly after birth from society, right? But that's like just the natural listening. And that's just something, again, to be aware of and to be roughly educated on. Yeah, and, and that's, that's almost segueing to, you know, speaking about the ego and how that develops. And, you know, will there be a time, hundreds or thousands of years, where we develop consciously and we're, we're born and go through adolescence? and grow up with higher levels of consciousness, I don't know, it can most certainly be taught us. Like we can most certainly start to put focus and, and emphasis on it. And something that I think about now with technology and where we're going, <laughs> you know, I businesses are always, there's always gonna be development. You know, we have an abundance of creative minds on this planet, which is awesome. Like somebody's always gonna think of something However, as far as, as far as outside of like having these widgets, these accessories, these, uh, you know, these little components in the world that can, that can help make life fun, enjoyable, cooler, uh, easier. We're, we're getting, I feel like we're getting close to, to a plateau. I mean, we're living now off of gadgets. Right? A car is still a car at this point. You know, it, it goes, it goes from A to B. Styling changes, you know, there's a lot of things integrated. At the end of the day, a car is only going to do so much. I mean, and I think we're getting to a point where we have to ask ourselves, where are we going? That's really, that's really interesting because right now, where we're going, we're just going towards more and faster. We're just going to faster and more, faster and more, faster and more. Right, and I, and I think, in, and so, you know, the virus that's going on, again, you can see it as positive or negative. Uh, I, for one, am not, I don't mind the slowdown. Somebody asked me once, well, how long should you go through quarantine? Indefinitely. I mean, I don't, I don't really have a, a problem with it. Again, it's living, present i mean do i enjoy do I, <laughs> right it, would you not say would you not say i'd love for people to get this from you would you not say that you're just really comfortable with your presence and then like you're like your your internal state is just so so solid that you don't need the the release like the escape like the external stimulus correct yeah yeah, yeah. It, it, you know and it's not that I enjoy being around people, uh, and it's it's. I just, regardless of the circumstance I'm in, and like you said, I'm I'm, I'm at peace. I'm content. If this was the new reality, I am so inherently present that I'm already affirmated. Because right now, this is the new reality, and how long it lasts again, is just a construct of thought. It, it, it's this predicting of the future. And well, the, the past, again, doesn't matter. So the memory, you know, it, some people are like, oh, it's been going on for, for weeks and months. And for me, it's been going on at this moment. And then it's gonna go on for this moment. And then if there's a moment, which I'm sure this won't be forever, however, when the moment comes where we open things back up, well, that would be in that moment. And it's interesting to me to see what people are going through. Um, I look at it as a, as a positive and I'm starting to see other people that see it as a positive too, which is enjoyable because this slowdown is giving us a Great from what you said. Everything is more fast, more fast. That is faster, faster, faster. And it's a uh, we'll take an old phrase from I think the early 1900s, right? Stop and smell the roses. And I don't know if it came from this scenario. I remember this in a movie. I think it was a movie or a book, where it's that phrase is is like driving. 
you know, if you, if you live your life driving, if you ever try to look out the window, you can't, you can't actually see the, the foliage, the nature you're passing, right? the blur. And that phrase is just, you know, pull over for a second. Imagine your entire life driving nonstop in a vehicle, which is really what we're, what you, like what we're getting to. The world is nonstop, getting to a vehicle. You never actually stop to look at the, the flowers, the trees, the nature that's around us, that we're right in front of. You, we go so fast that it gets to a point where it almost doesn't even exist in our frame of view and to our reality. And now we stop and we see, we see the image for what it is. Uh, more parents are now spending time with their children. Again, some may not be fond of that. There's a lot of families though where, where you know, that's a, that's a pleasant change. There's a lot of families where they spend so much time working that they don't see their kids. Or they come home and their kids are they're sleeping. And now you're getting those, those family moments that we used to have more of when we were developing into this more and faster, more and faster. Uh, there's, you know, gas prices are at historically low levels, at least in terms of barrels of oil. Uh, obviously not the actual dollar per gallon. However, it's the lowest it's been in you know, 25, 30 years. And, you know, accidents are going down. People aren't driving. And, you know, it's, again, it's what do you choose to plug into? this quarantine and you know then there's are the numbers inflated and this and at the end of the day it's not the worst thing in the world yes people are laid off and and i get that there, there's so many moving parts and there's going to be one that doesn't get addressed that somebody will make a comment on you know you, you, you just can't say it all and that's that in itself is what encompasses our awareness is just knowing there's more and not taking everything and reacting to everything so so literally uh, and again choosing to look at the the bright the bright side of things because ultimately it is a choice there's, there's two sides of the coin and i don't believe there's a and there's a side that i, I don't believe there's ever a moment where there's there's only a hundred percent darkness. We, we, we have a choice on what lens we're going to look through. And, and I, I think in hindsight, this is, this is going to be, a, a, for the most part, a good experience for the world. And, and that's thinking collectively, not, not individually where Yes, you can pick out some unfortunate circumstances and you can pick out, I mean, there's going to be a lot of millionaires made through this, a lot of new businesses made. It's like when they, when they grow new, new plant, uh, when they, when they grow new, uh, vegetation or new foliage, uh, they, they have these controlled burns because some seeds can only be, be seeded through the ashes, through the fire. Well, think of what's going to come out of it. That wouldn't have happened had this not happened, even if it is propped up. I don't know. I, don't, I mean, and a lot, a lot of it is what if. I really don't know. At the end of the day, though, just again, what's what's going to be born out of this situation? I think a lot of great things. I think a lot of great things as well. Um, I think maybe to close on this, I think that well, you raised a point like even if you're losing your job, it's not the end of the world. In a way, one, another way we can raise our awareness is that for us or for people that have a larger sense of awareness to see that what's affecting that person can be what they perceive as the end of their world, the end of their world as they know it, the end of their job, the relationship, the changing of their family structure, so their world as they know it is changing uh, for us to hold space for the change and what they're going through for, for us to be compassionate to them. And then also for them to realize that that is in the limited view of their world when there is no their world, right? Like we talk, like we've kind of been weaving in and out of this whole discussion. It's like our world, it's our reality, it's our consciousness. 
So two sides of the same coin again, for us to hold space for them and for them to, to see the other perspective, the larger perspective. Right, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna add on to that, you know, in holding space for them, ultimately, when we learn how to work together, those situations won't be as unfortunate as they are right now for the, and when I say unfortunate, I guess most objective way I can say that is it won't be as big of a shift from how they were living through life, to how now they may be experiencing life when we learn how to pick people up. You know, imagine, let's, let's just, and I'll close on this, let's go back an analogy to before we had all this technology. Maybe even in some tribes now that still aren't developed. Uh, and let's take a tribe of, so we can hold it in our minds, let's just say 10 huts, 10 little teepees, houses, whatever, you know, things that the community helped build, however you want to think about it in your mind. And one house gets knocked over. Well, in that community, would the other nine family just watch that 10th family struggle or would they get together you know and get outside and say all right guys let's let's help rebuild this this house so we can get you know whoever back into a home hey you can stay with us while we're doing that and that's a small example of, again but what, what i'm representing is a community working together now we're, we're so congested People are getting laid off. People are maybe possibly losing their houses. And we've become so egoic and so individual. It's like, you know, it's like watching that family in the example of 10 homes. It's like watching them just now survive outside and not doing anything about it. And when I say that, again, it's in terms of us. There is more than enough means for us to help each other to where nobody has to be put in a situation to truly survive in the world, life or death. Uh, we can definitely create an option for everyone to have a minimal baseline. And when I say option, because, you know, maybe not everyone's gonna take it, and some people are going to fall below the cracks due to a, a number of circumstances. However, we, we most certainly have the capacity to create an option for every single person to not be surviving while the other nine people are in their, in their home. That's all we're working for. All right.